Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Well, I've uh, decided to clean up my uh, my compartment here. Um, over the years, I've slowly built my boondocking system. So, if you followed the blog, you know I started with 200 panels, went to 400 panels. I had a, a, the OEM battery, and I had two Golf Guard batteries. Got rid of those. Put in four batteries. Um, added the charge converter over there, so this kind of stuff was added upon stuff, so it was kind of getting to be a bit of a, a rat's nest in there, like everything worked fine, but it didn't look great. And so I decided now that I'm getting the, the new light Lion Energy lithium batteries, there's one sitting down there, I'd uh, go through and shorten up leads and, and make sure all the, the wire gauges and, and breakers are all proper sized and everything like that just sort of clean it all up so I thought maybe folks would be interested in in what goes on in here I'll walk you through that before we get to the the install of the batteries so what I've done is I've taken a couple of the golf cart batteries out just starting to make some room this is my battery box so there's two of the golf cart batteries are taken out we're just on full hookups right now so I don't really need any battery power so I just put two back of course they're six volts so you have to put them together to make a 12 volt system but you can sort of see the the size comparison so one of these puppies is going to have enough the same pretty well the same amount of capacity as these two big golf cart batteries and they i looked them up they weigh 62 pounds each so that's a uh, what 124 pounds this thing is 20.9 pounds so just an amazing difference in in size and huge different in weight so what do i have running on my system um, let's start with uh, the positive leads here here's my main positive coming out of here and i have a, a what they call a catastrophic fuse it's kind of like a final safeguard fuse if anything in the wiring down the positive branches fails and this is the last line of resort you don't, you, want, you don't want the wiring to overheat and melt, so you want to fuse to your wiring. Uh, the battery cables are all what they call 2 watt, so they're plenty thick enough. Um, then over here I have 175 amp fuse for my, my inverter. Now it's only a 1000 watt inverter, but it ha can do 2000 watt surges, so the, the manual recommends I think it was about 165 amp, I put 175 amp in there. And that's also gonna protect some of the other lines here, like um, if anything goes wrong with the wiring to the inverter, that'll pop. So it protects those wires. These are big uh, two watt cables that go and power the inverter, these big thick ones. So there's the positive one there that goes to the inverter. Um, over here we have my solar controller so it looks a little bit of a mess but uh, what we got is we've got five solar panels coming in and they're all paralleled together up to here is a positive or no there's the positive there's the negative and i put a breaker in uh, just so i can turn the the panels off while I'm, if i'm doing any work on things i can take power off from the panels um, on the other side of the this is the Bogart charge controller. It, it comes out the positive here. It goes through a, a 40 amp breaker, uh, and then it goes down into my my main uh, D12 volt plus DC bus bar. So this this uh, fuse holder also acts as, as a bus bar. It makes it convenient to hook up all my positive loads. Another positive load that, that's hooked up to it is my charge converter. Now I've explained that in previous videos. Basically we have a charge converter on board um, and then this one I use for boondocking just because if by putting it very close to the batteries with, with heavy gauge leads I can get a lot of uh, charge out of it quickly into my batteries. Um, I don't know what's going to go on with the new lithium. Um, it's possible I may have to get a specialized charge converter for the lithium. I'm still kind of learning about that, but judging by, by what I hear, a lot of these can work, but they won't be as efficient as a dedicated lithium-type charge converter. So we'll cross that bridge in continuing uh, series of videos here. Anyway, that's, that's what that's all about. 
and we got uh, one other positive load coming off here goes into this 80 amp breaker which is acts as a battery disconnect too for my RV circuits so this is sort of the OEM run um, it comes out of this and you can see this red wire going down here and into the what Keystone Cougar set up down here you can see there's a couple uh, um, fusible uh, breakers here um, and it, the main power comes in here then it goes loops through a couple of them I'd say this wire here looks like be about a six gauge that's going into the RV into the main loads all the lights and you know furnace and water pump everything's coming out of that so um, they had used a, a four gauge so I stayed with a four gauge there I've just left their stuff alone for now. I haven't improved upon it or anything. But uh, I put that breaker in there. Basically that'll protect if anything happens to this line between their fuses down there and this uh, breaker up here. And then I also have another one coming off that. That was for that mod I did where I installed a port for my Viair air compressor. And we got a 30 amp fuse up here. so. This breaker protects this wire, so if something shorts here, it'll pop this breaker. If something shorts in this wire section, it'll pop this fuse. If something shorts in this wire, it'll pop this fuse. So it's kind of redundancy all along. You want to, you know, make sure you put breakers and fuses on every wire. Now let's go to the negative loads. So off the battery here, I have a, another 2 watt cable big heavy cable that goes to the shunt and that measures the current in and out of the battery. My trimetric monitor does that. Then it goes over this DC bus bar and uh, you can see coming off it is the negative line to the inverter. Very short and sweet and thick. And this other line that drops down, it, it drops down and I have it screwed into the heavy metal uh, frame of the RV. That's kind of the, the return. Um, that's what Keystone had done. A lot of their stuff uses the frame for a return. So I took advantage of that also just to keep things tidy and I did a couple of my return grounds for this. So I went straight down and for my solar charge controller goes straight down. So that finds ground through the frame back through here, up here, and then to the negative terminal of the batteries. This stuff in this corner too is also Keystone's stuff. Um, this is a, actually a thing where you can do remote operation of a bunch of stuff. So it's kind of a controller module for for a, for a remote control for you got your your slide and your, your main jacks and your uh, security light and your awning, that type of thing. So that's what that's all about. And a few miscellaneous things. This one amp fuse here that's hooked to the, the positive is to my trimetric battery monitor system. So I think that's where they sense the voltage. So I want it really close to the battery so it, it knows what's going on as voltage wise as far as the batteries go. And up here I have a ground, safety ground off the, the 1000 watt inverter down to the, the negative bus and over here off the charge converter I have another safety ground but those are really just in case if the cases ever were to, if something failed inside and the case were to become electrified what they call hot I wouldn't I wouldn't build I wouldn't shock myself it would blow blow a breaker or a fuse uh, this thing I don't have fused at all it's already fused in here itself so if something happens between here and the and the negative here it'll pop um, looks like it's got a 60 amp output it looks like they've paralleled 25 amp fuses in there as far as I can tell but anyway that's protected um, the inverter output I have two uh, pretty well I would class them as extension cords going into the RV and into some outlets so I don't wire my inverter into my my regular RV AC circuits it's all what they call a floating arrangement. Um, if you want to know about that, I'll leave a, a link in the description. I'll leave a link to the description to all the 
stuff I've done in here if you want to check that out. But uh, I don't know, I may upgrade from this. Once I get these new, new batteries, I'm going to have a lot more power to, to spare, so I may go to a 2000 watt inverter. We'll have to cross that bridge. Anyway, I just thought I'd update you on the wiring and such, because I know when I install the batteries, I get lots of questions about what was in there. So I thought I'd redo it and do this little video to explain everything. So, till next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers.